Hello, my name is Mike Gag, and welcome to my video on database terminology, which is part of my video series on Windows programming with C Sharp. I'd like to think that so far in this video series, I've kept the videos very technical, very straightforward, very respectable and upstanding. Uh, I plan on ruining all of that in this video because I'm going to attempt to draw. Uh, so while I might be decent at programming and I might be good at explaining things, uh, I am very, very bad at drawing. Uh, but I feel that uh, illustrating uh, some of this terminology kind of with a, a metaphor, with some uh, illustrations, uh, is helpful. So don't get caught up too much on the fact that I'm... I'm terrible. I'm also going to be using a mouse, and so it's not going to be great. Uh, however, hopefully it gets the point across. Okay. Now, of course, no artist would be uh, complete without MS Paint, uh, so we can go ahead and get started here. Now, when we talk about a database, uh, the internal workings of a database aren't aren't very important to us at this point, okay? Uh, I'm not much of a database guy myself. Uh, when someone starts talking about all the stuff that goes on inside a database, I don't really care. Um, it's, it's not something that I'm all that interested in. I'm more interested in the database itself in the path to get to the database. So if you're completely unfamiliar with databases, if you've never heard of one, if you've never looked, with, looked at one or ever worked with one, you may want to stop this video and go read a little bit about databases. Um, but if you're a little familiar with them or fairly familiar with them, then uh, you're going to be ready to go. Um, for those of you who don't know, just real quick, databases are full of tables. All right, Tables have fields, uh, and those fields have data. Um, that's the long and the short of it. So we might have an employee table, and that table lists all of our employees and, and relevant information. Uh, or you know, and it can get it can get much more complicated. It can be very simple. Um, basically, that's that's what we're dealing with. Okay, it's just a collection of data that's stored away from us. Now, the most important part of any database is its uh, data integrity. Uh, the data has no purpose if it's not secure. Okay, so databases have all sorts of security built into them to prevent data from getting corrupted or to prevent unauthorized access, things like that. It's with that in mind that we are going to refer to our database as a castle. All right, uh, so let me draw a castle here. Here's my castle. Uh -huh. Okay, so our database is a castle, um, and we don't ever go into it. Okay, here's a little flag. Okay, our database is a castle. Uh, its insides are locked away from us. We can't see it. Okay, uh, we don't get to use it, or we don't we don't get to go inside or look at any of the internal workings. Here I'll say uh, database. Perfect. Okay, um, and so that is that is our database. Our database is a castle in this metaphor. Now. Like I said, all the data is stored away in that database, but we need a way of accessing it. We need a way to get to the castle, so to speak. All right, so every castle has a road to it. So this castle is no different. Our database has a road to it. All right, that road is called the connection string. All right, the connection string has all of the information we need to access the database. All right. It has information about what protocol we're using, uh, has information about maybe passwords, uh, uh, different security things, um, where the file, where the database is located. Right. Uh, all these things are built into a connection string. So the connection string is kind of like our road to get the data out of our castle. Okay. Now, uh, if the connection string is the road to the castle, you know we use that to, to pull data out. We need to then do something with that data. It's not as straightforward as just saying, hey, uh, we, we can go to this castle, we can go to this database, and we can just pull information, all right? It doesn't, it doesn't quite work like that. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to oversimplify this. So if you're familiar with databasing at all, you might think, oh, man, that's not 100% accurate. I'm, I'm simplifying this great down, uh, or, or way down. Uh, so what I want to talk about next is this mystical thing called the table, table adapter. All right, and I like to draw the table adapter as a spiral. Okay, the table adapter is this mystic thing, uh, basically that sits uh, between us and the connection string. Table adapter. All right, it sits between us and the connection string. Kind of does a little bit of translation for us. All right, so the table adapter is responsible for taking taking information from us and taking it to the database, and taking information from the database and bringing it to us. All right, so that's our table adapter. From the table adapter, we have this thing called a, 
a data set. All right, uh, I'm just going to represent the data set with sort of a UML looking data set and a couple of uh, arrows there. So this is our data set. Our data set, just like that, is basically an in memory representation of the database. I'll just type that out there. Okay, uh, that's the part we're going to work with the most. The data set is the set of the data. Basically, it's a mirror image of the database uh, based on our specifications, based on the data that we wanted to pull from the database. So we never work directly with the database. We always work with the data set. It looks just like the database, but we're not actually dealing directly with the database for security reasons. We don't want to accidentally mess up information inside the database, right? We can do whatever we want to the data set uh, because that's not... That's not the database, right? It's just a copy of the database. It's a working copy of the database. All right, and from our data set, we have a couple things we can do. All right, one, we can deal with this, and I'll, uh, I'll draw. This is supposed to be a chain. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a chain. It also kind of looks like the Olympic symbol. Uh, so we have this, this chain thing. Uh, the data set can deal with something called a binding source which we're going to deal with in this video series. The binding source is responsible uh, for taking information from the data set and binding it to controls. Okay, We can deal with the binding source or we can deal with controls themselves. I don't really have uh, a great representation of a control, so how about that's a button. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, so we have these controls. Um, so we can rely on a data source or we can do it ourselves, okay? Uh, and from here, the binding source might also uh, link to a control. So I'm gonna draw an arrow like this, and arrows like this, and like this. Okay, so long story short, this is the reason I'm telling you all this, all right? This part here, the, the binding source, uh, this part here, this is the part we deal with directly. Controls and binding source. All right, uh, we work with these. Uh, these are what the clients, well, the client sees the controls, not the binding source, but the binding source is attached to the control. So this is the meat of our Windows application, okay? And then we have behind the scenes logic that talks to the data set. So the binding source and the controls only talk to the data set. They don't talk to the table adapter. They don't talk to the database, okay? Then the, the data set talks with the table adapter, all right? and the table adapter talks to the database. The data set does not talk to the database, and the table adapter doesn't talk directly to the binding source of the controls. All right, the data set is the middleman there. And then finally, our database talks via the connection string to our table adapter, and our table adapter talks to the database. Note that our database does not talk to the binding source of the controls of the data set. This is a basically a chain of custody. It's set up for security purposes. All right, so it goes database via the connection string to the table adapter, to the data set, to the binding source, to the control. Now that sounds very, very complicated. I understand this. But luckily for us, a lot of the work is done for us. Behind the scenes, we don't necessarily have to see it. We don't necessarily have to directly interact with the table adapter or even the database. All right. So a lot of this work is, 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 is super simple. We never really have to deal with it. Okay. So hopefully I haven't confused you all uh, with my terrible drawings. Uh, hopefully my explanation was decent. Uh, but basically just know that we're 99% of the time concerned with the data set, the binding source, and the controls. That's it. I mean, that's really what we're worried about. Very, very infrequently will we mess around with the table adapter. Almost never will we touch the database. Okay? Um, and so in the, the next video, we're going to talk about setting up a data grid view and binding some data to that. Uh, using a binding source and navigating using a, a binding navigator, a binding navigator, um, and we'll see all of this that I just talked about in this video. We'll get to see it in action.